Hello everyone, I am Sanket Singh and welcome back to my channel. So guys, a lot of time you might have used something like URL shorteners to act actually shorten your URLs and save them all together. They are pretty handy, right? So how about we make our own URL shortener and that too with Next.js. Yes. So in this particular video, I'm going to make a very simple URL shortener application that you can actually make with all the concepts that we learned about Next.js. This is the part of the Next.js series that we are having on the channel. And we already released two videos prior to this, where we talked about a lot of concepts around Next.js. If you have not yet watched those, I would highly recommend you guys to watch them first and then come back and maybe make this project with me. So this is going to be an interesting and fun project. And the best part, it's going to be pretty simple. So even if you are a beginner in the world of, I would say, full stack development, this is going to be a fair and simple project for you. So without any further delay, let's just start and let's start coding our URL shortener application. So guys, before moving forward, there is a very important information that I would like to give you. So recently we wrapped our Elite 1.0 front-end development course. And now we have launched our Elite 2.0 advanced front-end development course. This is a bigger and a better front-end development course that you need. This course doesn't need any particular prerequisite and we are going to take you from the very beginner level to the advanced level of front-end engineering. We have actually included projects like your own Repelit clone, Wix, Wix website maker clone, right, Uber clone and a lot of similar projects. You are going to make your own PopSub library based LLD driven projects and we are going to make sure that you learn important front-end design patterns as well. I'm going to list down all the projects and all the important design patterns here. This is the only course that you need if you are aiming for SD1 or SD2 or SD3 kind of roles because we are going to take everything to the very advanced level in front-end engineering. We are going to learn a lot of optimizations and we are going to see technologies like Next.js, Redux, Zustand, TypeScript, React and of course the latest version of React. This particular course is going to make sure that you have ample amount of projects that you can add in your resume. We are going to make approximately 20 plus projects with different variety of complexities, engineering problems, and of course, there will be a lot of discussion around the core concepts of front-end. So what are you waiting for? Check out the course link in the description below and you can use the coupon code mentioned in the description section to get maximum discount possible. See you guys in the cohort and let's get back to the video. Now we have discussed a lot of things regarding, I would say, next years. Now I believe for the remaining concepts, let's try to build up something end to end from scratch. And while building those things, we'll be able to get some context around the new concepts that uh, next years provides. Right. So what we are going to do is we are going to build a very simple URL shortener kind of an application. Right. What this application will simply do is that you can give it a URL and it will give you a shortened URL and we will be persisting those shortened URL on the back end. And whenever somebody uh, like tries to go through the shortened URL, then you are going to redirect them to the original URL altogether. These kind of functionalities we want to have just like a normal URL shortener. Now, considering the fact that Next.js is a full stack framework, that means we will be able to write our backend logic, frontend logic together, right? We'll be able to do database interactions in the same code base, a full stack application will be able to build. So let's try to do that. Let's try to do that. So I'm inside my next tutorial folder and here I'm going to make a brand new project. I'll say npx create next app. Okay. So create next app is the tool that we are going to use in order to make sure that we are able to create the brand new Next.js application. Okay. And I'll say at the rate latest. Okay. And we'll give the app name. I'll call it as URL shorty. Okay. I'll name the app as URL shorty. And uh, you can give a flag minus minus TS to keep it a type, TypeScript, uh, I would say project. And there is one more flag called as experimental app. So you can read about this particular flag. It's pretty simple. So if you will just Google it up in next. Okay. You can see. Uh, da, da, da. Next JS. Yes. Um, let's write it like this. Okay, you can see the experimental app flag in Next.js enables the new app directory and its feature. The flag is still experimental and may cause unexpected broken issues, uh, so on and so forth. So if you want, you can actually uh, provide this particular app and you can see this uh, flag is only available in Next.js 13 or higher, right? So it's generally not, like not recommended for many production environments, but um, I would say you can, if you want, you can actually use it in your uh, local app but for now i'll just i'll just remove it i'll just remove it and we'll just make a brand new project okay so now it asks you whether whether you want to use eslint or not i'll say a yes whether you want to use tailwind css i'll say a yes 
whether you would like to have a source directory, I'll say yes. Do you want to have an app router? I'll say yes. We don't want page router as of now. Okay. And uh, would you like to customize the default import alias? I'll say a no. And you can see it is going to create a brand new Next.js application for us. So we're going to wait for it to build the whole, um, I would say project, and then we can start implementing a couple of stuff, right? You can see Tailwind and everything is coming up out of the box. So that's great. What we can do is we can integrate Daisy UI for some nice UI stuff. Okay. Let's wait for it. Let's wait for it. Cool. So you can see this is up and we can go to URL shorty and I'll open this in VS code. Here we go. And I'll just say, for example, npm run dev. And you can see a brand new server must be up on localhost 3000. Let's say localhost 3000. Here we go. And you can see a brand new Next.js application is up and running with us. If I go to the source directory, I'll just remove all the irrelevant stuff as of now. Right, everything around layouts and everything. Um, for example, if you go to this page.tsx, we don't need this much stuff. I'll just remove all of this and I'll just say for now, URL shorty. Okay, we don't need these images and everything. So I'll save it. And apart from that, this global CSS also, uh, we will remove. We will not remove the tailwind base CSS and components. So we'll just remove the remaining part of the CSS. That's okay. And if you come back to the app, you can see we have URL shorty coming up. Okay, pretty simple, pretty clean. Okay. And now you can see uh, uh, Tailwind is already up and running inside our application. What I would like to do is I would like to install Daisy UI. So I'll say install Daisy UI. Okay. So Daisy UI will give us some nice uh, UI components that we can later use. Apart from that, we are going to integrate MongoDB in our project, right? So for that, we will be using an ODM Mongoose. Okay. If you don't know about Mongoose, I can just tell you that in case you are from the front end world and you want to expose yourself to the full stack world, then start learning about databases and everything. When you will be learning about databases, you will realize that there is a concept of ORMs or ODMs. What is an ORM or an ODM? ORM or, or an ODM is something like an interface that sits between your application and your database which provides you object oriented ways to access your database. You don't have to like write raw DB queries. Instead, you can use some object oriented classes and objects uh, to interact with the database that I can summarize as of now. So the Mongoose is there for us for that. And there is one more, uh, I would say package that we can use called as short ID. This will help us to create a shortened URL for our original URL, very simple altogether. Okay. And because it's a TypeScript uh, project, I'll say npm install at the rate types slash mongoose. So we need to install the types for mongoose and here we go. So most of the, I would say, you can say the libraries are up and running. Okay. Now what we'll do is I'll just say, just let's just do one thing. Now you can see there is a tailwind config dot ts right inside the plugins for tailwind config. I'll make one small change. I will say require daisy ui save it and if now i do npm run dev right and if i refresh here we go you can see daisy ui is up and running that's why we are able to see kind of like this dark theme coming up all together so you can see our project is uh like in a good shape to get so that we can get started with the logic support Okay. Now the first thing that I would like to do is, is to set up a new MongoDB database. Okay. So for that, what you can actually do is there is a website called as MongoDB Atlas. This will help you to actually set up a free MongoDB instance on the cloud. Okay. So what you can actually do is you can click on MongoDB Atlas. Okay. You can click on sign in and create a new account. I'll just log in through my account. Just allow me a minute to log in. Let's wait. Let's wait. It's still logging in and you can see we are through and here we go. Okay. Now here, what I'm going to do is if you, this is the first time sign up, it will ask you for a new project. This is not my first time sign up. So I'll click here and I'll click on new project. Okay. I'll name this project as let's say URL shorty. Okay. And I'll click on next 
and I'll click on create project. Okay. So you can say that we are hosting a brand new database on the cloud so that we can actually later use it inside our app. Okay. Now you can see, um, it has created a new project for us. Now what you need to do is you need to prepare a server instance that we call as a cluster in MongoDB Atlas that can actually host your database. You can click on create and what MongoDB Atlas do is internally it can use AWS, GCP, Azure, whatever you want. And you can choose a free instance, which will, which will help you for the learning purpose. If you want, you can pay a relatively more powerful and a faster instance, but then you have to pay for it. I'll choose the free one. Okay. And then. You I'll choose AWS. I'll choose Mumbai, uh, Asia, Pacific South, and I'll click on create deployment. Cool. Now you can see it will ask you to have a username and a password. So I'll just keep this username and password safe somewhere. Okay. So what we can actually do is what we can actually do is, um, let's do one thing. I'll create a new file and I will call it as dot env okay and inside this dot env file first of all let's create this db user i'll copy this password and keep it somewhere so i'll let's say keep it somewhere here okay i'll click on create db user once your db user has been created you can click on choose a connection method you can click on drivers and you can choose node.js because we will be using the node.js environment to actually connect and then you can copy this url you can copy this url you can come to your .env file and you can say mongodb uri is equals to and you can paste this url all together as simple as that save it and now we do not need this password because this password is already present here right i would highly recommend you guys to make your own db instance because probably i will just turn it off later but you can see this is the step and you can see a new mongodb instance is up and running right you can see a new MongoDB instance is actually up and running. Now, one last thing that you should technically do is you can go to the network access and here you can click on add IP address and you can click on allow access from anywhere so that you can access this database from anywhere. Otherwise, next time, let's say your, um, I would say temporary IP changes, then you won't be able to access your uh, MongoDB instance directly. Okay. So you can just call allow access from anywhere as simple as that. And we'll come back to the database and you can see our brand new database is, uh, working fine it's already up and running now what we should technically do is we can make inside the source folder i can make a new folder i can call it as config okay inside the config i will create a new file i'll call it as db.ts and this file will store our details around the database configuration i'll say import mongoose from mongoose and i'll say const connect db is equals to an async function okay and from here we can say return mongoose dot connect and what we can do is we can say process dot env dot mongo db uri okay as string okay so we'll be reading it as string and that's it. This looks good to me. First of all, I'll just do a quick console.log of process.env.mongodb URI. Save it here. And let's see if I just, uh, and what we need to do is we need to then call this connect db function as well later. So I'll say export default connect db. Okay. So we'll call this connect db function later. So that we are able to uh, connect to this uh, MongoDB instance altogether. Okay. And the moment you will call this connect DB at any point of time, this will actually try to uh, connect to your MongoDB instance. This looks good to me as of now. This looks good to me as of now. Now the next thing that you can do is you can try to create a model. Now, what is a model? Model is a, you can say programmatic representation of how your data will, will look like in the database. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll create a new folder models. Inside the models folder, I'll create a new file and I will call it as URL.ts. Okay. Let's rename it to URL like this. Okay. Cool. Now using mongoose, you can prepare a couple of schema. So you can say import mongoose from mongoose. Okay. 
and then apart from mongoose i import document model and schema as well and here we should say const url schema is equals to new mongoose dot schema okay and you can check the documentation of uh, mongoose in order to check how these things are working if you are a pure front-end engineer and you have never interacted with something like mongodb and mongoose i would say just go ahead try to read about it you will get most of the data it's a little bit of back end stuff so if you want to in get indulged in the full stack journey then technically you need to have some context around back end right now you can call it as original url one property i will keep as original url that type i will keep as spring and required i'll keep as true okay and unique i'll keep as true make sense and then and then i will say short url short url type as string required as true required as true and i'll call unique true as well so the original url and shortened url both should be unique okay and then here this is the first object inside the schema constructor there is a one more object that you can pass where you can say timestamps to true so that if you pass this timestamps colon true property then technically what will happen is created at and updated at property with every record will also be same as simple as that okay so this is our schema object now what i'll do is i'll say export interface i url this is going to extend this is going to extend the document and here we can say original url as string and short url short url as string okay as simple as that and then using this schema you need to create an actual model or a collection object you can say const url url which is of type model of i url i url okay is equals to mongoose dot models mongoose dot models dot url in case the mo url model is already present then you do not need to create it if it is not present then i'll say mongoose dot model i'll call this model function i'll call this model function give the collection name as url and i will pass the url schema altogether okay url schema altogether and this is going to return an object of type i url this looks good and then we can just do a export default simple i would say typescript and mongoose stuff to create a brand new uh, i would say mongoose schema that's it so you can see most of the back end i would say stuff is ready for us uh, we are in a good shape to actually start implementing the front end that can actually uh, hit this particular database to hit this particular database we'll be exposing a couple of apis as well on the back end so all of that part we are going to see but i believe our application is in a good state i would like to push it on github i'll create a new repository i'll call it as url shoddy next next yes okay i'll create this repository i believe we already have a dot git ignore so that's good and then i'll just get this remote copy i'll say get in it get add all git commit minus m basic db setup basic db setup done and let's just quickly check if our dot env file is uh yeah you can see dot env file is already uh, i guess out one second so uh let's just check one thing let's just check one thing i'll say git status uh so it is taking the dot env file so we can just quickly go and check next js env variables okay Let's see if it is asking us for any different type of a. So you can make a env dot local instead of a dot env. You can make a env dot local. So dot env dot local. So I'll rename it to dot env dot local. Okay. And now if you do a git status, okay, this is now not present. And I'll just do a git init again. Git init. Git add all. 
git commit minus m added basic db interaction with next step and i'll say git checkout minus b master i'll paste the remote one second let's bring back the remote link pretty standard version control stuff and i'll say git push origin master there we go and if you come back here and if you refresh you can see our next project is uploaded you can go to this particular url and try to get access to this particular project and now we are going to start implementing a couple of apis and implement the ui stuff as well so that this url shortener starts working for us so till now most of the discussion that we have done inside nextjs has been revolving around the ui layer or the front end aspect of it okay now let's say you want to have a situation where you want to prepare a couple of APIs considering the fact that Next.js is a full stack framework then you should be able to create some APIs and then consume these APIs outside of Next.js as well right like this kind of functionality should be there with you right and th so that's a very simple process that exists with Next.js all you have to do is come to your app folder inside your app folder you can create a new folder API now this api folder is a special folder why because inside this api folder if let's say you create let's say a new folder for example um let's say to do's and inside this to do's folder let's say if you create a new file route.ts now this route name is gonna be pretty important okay now inside this route.ts you can specifically mention your get post put patch different different kind of request and the url or I would say the routes for this particular API that you are going to write is going to be slash API slash to do's. So based on the folder name, just like how it was taking the component uh, route, uh, whenever you write a component, then you want to define the page for it. It used to take the names from the folder, similar kind of folder naming it will take here. For example, if you want to have a slash API slash user slash to do's kind of an API, so you can make an API folder in that API folder, you can make a users folder inside that users folder, you can make a to do's folder only. Okay, so let me just quickly write a very, very small uh, API in front of you to show you actually how things actually work. Okay, now, how things work is that, first of all, there is an object called as next response. Okay, from next slash server, you can actually import it. This next response object help you to actually give back the response of the API. And then all you have to do is you have to individually do a export of each function, right? You can do a kind of like a named export. Right. And uh, you can say export async function and you have to individually export functions like get. Okay. Just like this, you will be exporting a get function. Now, when you export a get function, what happens is that your URL is going to be slash API slash to do's. And if somebody makes a get request on this slash API slash to do's, this particular method is going to be invoked. Okay. If let's say you make a method like post, if you get make a method like post. So if you make slash API slash to do's on a post request, then this particular method is going to be in. Okay. So this is how things actually work. For example, let me actually show you. So let's say here, I'll say return next response dot JSON. And inside the JSON, I'll say to do's as uh, to do one, right? And let's add one more to do two. Okay. Uh, let's add it as a string to do two. Okay. Again, what is API and everything? If you don't know, if you're a complete full front end engineer, I would say explore the backend aspect. Just then only you'll be able to get all of these things. Okay. So this is something that you can actually do. And then you can configure more things as well. For example, you can say dot, um, for example, you can see dot JSON is there, right? And then dot error is there. All of these different, different kind of methods are available. You can actually take a look at next response and you can see uh what all methods you have dot json inside the this actually takes kind of like a body which converts to a json body you can have a redirect you can have a write you can have a next all of these things you can actually have okay let but first of all let's go step by step i'll comment it out and let's turn up our servers okay let's turn up our servers so um let me open the terminal here and i will say npm run dev okay so you can see the server is up, the server is up. Let's wait for it. Okay. You can see the server is up. Now let me open Postman. Let me open Postman.
Okay, cool. Now let's say what I'll do is I'll say new blank collection of next URL shorty. Next URL shorty. Okay. And inside this, I'll add a request. Add request. Let's say I'll make a get request to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost 3000 slash api slash to do's if you make this request send it and can you see we are able to hit the api and we are able to fetch to do's here how cool is that if let's say if instead of this you may have a post request as well okay if you have let's say a post request as well and let's say inside this post request what you want to do is you just want to let's say return next response dot json Okay, next response.json. And let's say you are going to say um, a to do with, let's say, string to do three, right? Something like this. Save it. And now let's say if you make a post request on the same route, you can say this is something that you are going to do. If you carefully see the status code is 200 okay here. So you can pass one more argument where you can actually define what should be the status code. So status code should be, let's say, 201. If you save it and send it again, now you can see status code is coming as 201. So this kind of a response structure you can try to define in order to prepare APIs. Now instead of post, if you make it, let's say a delete request, save it. And instead of post, if I just start making a delete request here, send it, you can see delete request also works. And like now, let's say if you want to have something like slash API slash to do slash one, right? So for that, you can have again a similar structure. You can have a folder inside that folder. The name is going to be square bracket based id okay and then you can have let's say a new file route.ts inside this route.ts file i'll copy everything from here paste it here i don't need the delete request or let's have a delete request for example and i'll just let's say say uh, next response dot uh, json and i'll say response is true something like this and in the get request, for example, let's say I will just return to do as to do one. Okay. To do as to do one. Cool. So let's say this is the kind of, um, I would say scenario. Now in this case, for example, um, if you make a request, so let me actually show you to do one. So if you make a get request to slash to do's slash one, two, three and send it. Now, can you see we are getting to do to do one? So that means this particular route is being hit. Now you might be thinking that, okay, how can we access this particular ID as well? This is the URL params ID. How can we access this particular ID here? So this, all of these methods actually access a couple of things. The first parameter that they access is the request object. The type of this request object is the normal, I would say request, right? So this request object detail you will find in the MDN articles also. So this is like the request request object available in the browser directly, right? And then the second parameter, second parameter is an object. Okay. Uh, you can say custom object. Okay. And um, let me actually show you this with the documentation first. Okay. Let me open the documentation. Okay. So you can say url params next js next js okay url params okay and in apis in apis in apis okay so uh let me actually show you or or let's do one thing uh, we can say params next js api Next JS API. You can see API routes. We are getting the documentation for API routes, right? So you can see this is the similar kind of thing. We are making an API folder inside the API folder, whatever uh, structure you are going to build, uh, we'll get the structures here. Okay. And you can see a good thing to know API routes do not specify course headers, meaning they, uh, meaning they are same origin only by default. You can customize this behavior by make, taking help of some course uh, request helpers altogether. Okay. Now, for example, if you want to see what are the parameters coming up here, so the parameters are this first is the request object altogether. 
right? You can see this is the request object altogether. But although this documentation actually shows you the older way of making APIs, if you want to see the newer ways of making the APIs, you have to actually come to the API router stuff. Okay. Inside this API router, you can actually find for like the API documentation. So I'll say API. Okay. Uh, route API route or let's see or let's let's say post uh, route let's see okay and coming up here you can see this kind of behavior this kind of behavior you can actually prepare okay route handler so you can make a async function get this will be a get request that we will actually go through so you if you will make a request to slash api slash items this is the kind of scenario you will actually see and as I mentioned, the first argument is the request parameter. So inside this request parameter, you have the remaining details, request.url, all of these things. So from here, you can actually get this ID property coming up as well, right? These kind of things you can actually do. You can go through this whole documentation altogether to get all of these details as such, okay? And apart from that, let's say if you want to have some dynamic segments, for example, the URL params. So the second parameter, you can actually fetch as the params like this here. This is how you can fetch the second parameter like this, like this slug you want to fetch. This is how you can actually fetch it. Okay. So let me actually show you. So in case, instead of slug, we have this ID and I want to fetch this ID. What I'll do is I'll say this object and I'll destructure this object as let's say, uh, params and what should be the types of type of the params, the type of the params is going to be an object, which will be having an, an ID with the type string. Okay. That's how you can actually fetch the corresponding ID. That's how you can fetch the corresponding ID. And then, and then what you can do is you can say const ID is equals to params, params. And I'll say to do one plus ID, save it. And if I make this request, can you see we are getting to do one, one, two, three, right? So that's how you can make a, a get request to a particular URL. And like now, if you make a delete request as well, if let's say you make a delete request as well, like now here delete request this delete request is also going to come up here right so now you can see how things are actually working all together if let's say if let's say instead of delete request let's say i want to make it a post request okay and let's say you want to hit a post request here post save it and send it you can see now we are hitting a post request let's say now we want to send a body now we want to send a body so let's say inside this json i'll say data as two okay and let's say you want to access the body. How do you access the body? So you can just get access to the request object. And I'll say console.log request.json. Okay. Request.json. And this is technically a await call. Okay. And let's just quickly check. Request. Okay. Save it. And now if you hit this, if you hit this, can you see we are getting data too. So that's how you can actually, um, I would say access your request body altogether, right? So you can see URL params request body can be very easily accessed, right? This, these parameters is just something like how Next.js defines things for you to be done. If at any point of time you have done things like preparing APIs with Express.js, Express.js has a similar format, at least in terms of the request. But there you have the express request object and the second parameter is the express response object. Here you have the first parameter is the request object. This request object, you can find the details in MDN as well. Request MDN. You can see this is the interface object using the request constructor, right? This request interface of the fetch API represents a resource request. So this is part of your fetch API altogether. This is part of your fetch API altogether, right? Now. Apart from this, let's say there is uh, a couple of, uh, instead of a post request, let's say this is there, but there is some query params as well. Something like title is equals to hello. Okay. This query params is there. How can I access the query params? If you want to access the query params, what you can do is you can say cons search params is equals to new URL. I'll create a new URL object using request.url. Okay. And then I'll say console.log, console.log, search params dot get. So you need to manually fetch these parameters, title, save it, and I'll copy, 
paste paste save it and now if you send it now can you see we are able to get the title property as hello if i change it to hello let's say one and send it you can see hello one is being fetched so this is how you can actually access the url uh, sorry i would say query params altogether the params that you have after the question box so this is how you can prepare a very simple api altogether this is how you can do the routings and you can have a pretty nested structure altogether coming up and the folder structure is going to tell how exactly the api is going to look like right so this is just for your reference i do not want a to do's api to be very honest i'll just delete this whole folder into it inside the api what i want is i'll create a new folder right and the name of this folder i can keep as shorten okay where we are going to actually keep the shortened APIs for my, um, uh, I would say all the shortened URL. This API is going to contain all the shortened URLs altogether, right? So we need to maybe write a post request on slash API slash shorten so that we can actually shorten a couple of uh, requests altogether. Then we can actually make a get request to get uh, a particular shortened URL. Then I can write maybe a post request to actually fetch, uh, let's say, to create this shortened URLs and then let's say I can write a get request to fetch all the shortened URLs, all of these APIs we are going to write. So let's just quickly deep dive in and start writing our URL shortener APIs. So now inside the shortened folder, inside the shortened folder, what I'm going to do is I'll make a new file route.ts as simple as that. Okay. Uh, let me one second. Let me create this file here. New file route.ts. Okay. Now, as of now, as of now, the most important route that we can have is to create the corresponding, uh, I would say shortened URLs. Okay. So let's write one for them. Let's write a logic one for them. So I'll say export, export async function post. Okay. So I'm going to export a post function. I'll say request is going to be the request object from here. Okay. Cool. Now. What we are going to do is, what we are going to do is inside the request body, inside the request body, we are going to fetch the original URL. So I'll say const original URL is equals to await request.json. So to fetch this request.json, you need to technically await. Here. Okay. Cool. And then what we are going to do is we are going to call a method that can actually shorten the URL for us. Okay. So where we will keep those methods, where we will keep those methods. So here we can make a new folder and let's say, um, we can call that folder as services. Okay. We can call that folder as services and I'll make a new file and I will call it as URL dot dinner service dot TS. Okay. And here I'm going to write a async function. We'll say async function url dot net okay this is going to get a original url this is going to get a original url altogether which is going to be of the form string okay which is going to be of the form string cool and what is this going to return this is going to return another shortened url only so this is going to return a string altogether cool okay now what we are going to do is what we are going to do is let's say we want to first of all connect to the database and first of all check that uh, whether there is already an original URL entry in our database or not. Because inside our database, if you remember, if you remember the models, okay, I can uh, later bring the models and everything also inside app. So if you remember the models, you can see the original URL and shorter URL. You are keeping mainly two properties. So if there is already an entry for the original URL, then technically we have already shortened this URL. I'm going to return that URL altogether as simple as that right so we don't have to bother a lot about it so let's uh, first of all do that but generally all the db interactions we do not do here we do not do the db interactions altogether here for doing the db interaction what we should have is we should have a repository layer so let me do one thing let's first of all bring the models inside move and let's bring the config inside um or or, or let's 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 not move it because otherwise it will start creating the corresponding components out of it so let's in fact keep everything apart from the APIs out of the app folder. So config I'll move out, services I'll move out, and models also I'll move out. Move. Okay, let's keep it like this. 
So this is the services. This is the services folder, URL shortener service. Now, similar to this, I'll make a new folder repositories, repositories. Okay. Inside the repositories, let's say I'll create a new file URL repository.ts. Okay. Cool. Now, inside the URL repository, what we are going to do is we are going to say import. I'll say URL from at the rate model slash URL, right? So you can see this is the URL object that we are fetching. Okay. So now we have the URL all together. Now what we can do is we can say class URL repository, class URL repository. We can have a constructor. We can have a constructor and we can say this dot URL model. URL model is equals to URL. Okay. And we'll keep a URL model property already. So I'll say URL model is of type, let's say IURL. Okay. And let's keep it of type URL. Cool. Uh, let's see. So, um, Let's, let's make a couple of changes. Let's make a couple of changes. Okay. So let's do one thing. First of all, uh, inside the constructor, before we set up our URL model, right? Before we actually set up the URL model, let's do one thing. We also need to connect to the database, right? That's an important part. So I'll say import connect DB from config. And the first thing that we should do is we should call the connect DB method, right? This is technically. Uh, make a connection between our, um, I would say project and the corresponding database. And then, and then what we can do is let's, uh, call it like this and say private URL model, private URL model. And then I'll say this dot URL model is equals to URL altogether. Save it. So now I can see we have a URL model with us. We have a URL model with us and we are going to write a couple of functions that will be later helpful for us. Okay. The first function we are going to write is get URL by ID. Okay. This is going to take, let's say, uh, ID string. And this is going to technically return me a promise of I URL or null or null. Okay. Now, how can we fetch the corresponding URL? You can actually return await this dot URL model dot find by find by ID find by ID right I'm going to pass the ID here okay dot key cool this looks good this looks good right so now now you can see uh there's a error coming up it says it does not exist on this particular type let's quickly check why this might be happening let's save it Okay. So we have done a small mistake. This should be URL, the small URL that is coming from the models. Okay. Now you can see things are good. And just like we have get URL by ID. Okay. We can have a couple of more methods coming up here. Async get URL by short URL. Okay. And let's say I'll pass the short URL and for the short URL, let's say if you want to return the original URL, you can do that. Okay. So let's say it is going to return a promise of I URL. Or no. Okay. And we can say return await this dot URL model dot find one find one. Okay. And I'll say short URL dot leave. Okay. So you can see now this method is going to help us get the original URL by the short URL. So somebody will pass the short URL and you can get the original URL and a similar function I can write. So all of these are actually the queries that we are making using our ODN, right? Because these are technically your, these should have been your technically DB queries, but we are not writing DB queries. We are writing more object oriented code like find one, find by ID, so on and so forth. So you can say get shortened URL, uh, by get URL by original URL. Let's call it like get URL by original URL original URL. Okay. And here I'll pass, let's say original URL. 
Okay, I'll just quickly check the model. If things are complying with the model. Yep, original URL. Okay, and this original URL we are going to pass here. Now we are able to get the URL from the shortened URL or original URL, both ways on good. We can have one more function, get all URLs. Okay. And this should be a promise of I URL or null. Okay. And then we can just say return this dot URL model dot find. Okay. Looks good. Get all URLs is coming up. Now we need to have create URL, update URL and delete URL. So delete URL is going to be very much similar to this. Copy and paste delete URL. Okay, it will take an ID and we can say dot find by ID and delete. Find by ID and delete. And one more method I can write async create URL. Async create URL. Okay. This create URL is going to take original URL as string and short URL as string. Okay. And this is also going to return a promise of I URL or null. Okay. Or just I URL because this will always create it, right? And I'll say return. Await this dot uh, URL model dot create. Okay, so we can say dot create, and we can pass short URL and we can pass original URL. Okay, this is good. And let's just quickly check. This should be original URL, right? And that's it. That's it. This should be good. Now, one method I'm not writing, I'm not writing the update method. You can write the update method maybe yourself that you can take as a take home task. Okay. So I'll add a to do add the update method so that we have an end to end crud ready with us. So you can see this repository is now available. Now let's start writing our URL shortener service inside the URL shortener service. Our URL shortening logic is going to be there. Okay. So first of all, how the URL shortening logic should go. First of all, you need to check if the URL that you want to shorten the original URL is already present in the database. You don't need to short anything. It's already shorted. So I'll say let URL is equals to await. Okay. And let's make it also class based. So I'll say class URL shortener service. Okay. And I'll say constructor. And you can say this dot URL repository is equals to and uh, new URL repository. Let's export it. I guess I did not export it. So I'll say export default and I'll say repository. Okay. And I'll say private URL repository. Save it. Cool. And I'll export this one as well. Cool. Now here we are going to write async shorten URL. This is going to take the original URL, which is of type string. Okay. And this is going to return a promise of string. This is going to return a promise of string. Okay. Cool. Now, first of all, we are going to check that if this dot URL repository dot get URL by original URL and I'll pass the original URL. Okay. If this URL is present, if this URL is present, we are going to say URL dot short URL. So we are going to return it short URL altogether immediately. Right. This looks good. This looks good. And then, and then we can say let short URL in case the original URL is, is not already present in the database. We are going to say short ID. Okay. And we should technically import short ID. So I'll say import short ID from short ID. Okay. And I'll say short ID altogether. 
uh this should be capital i i guess okay let's see uh, uh, uh. okay i guess i have not added the types for short id let's add the types for short id so i'll just add it to my terminal okay and npm run dev this should be short id okay this looks good so now we are going to create a short end url id okay and we are going to say url is equals to this dot and i should say first and await await this dot url repository dot get url by short url and i'll pass short url dot url so now what's i'm what i'm doing is let's say this short id package this technically creates an id for us but maybe because now we do not know how this logic is being executed let's say for a moment this is random id generator so this random id generator if it generates a random id then this same id might have been generated earlier as well so we need to check if there is already an original url which has the same shortened url which is different from our original url then we do not want to do this we do not want to do this so we'll say while and we, we keep on doing this because let's say again you generated a short id it's still allocated to somebody so till the time url is present i'll say short url is equals to short id okay short id and then again this same procedure we are going to execute this same procedure we are going to execute so we'll keep on executing it we'll keep on executing it till the time we get a unique url that has not been assigned yet to any particular original url once we have that i'll say wait this dot url repository dot create url First, we are going to pass the original URL, then we are going to pass the short URL onto that. Okay. And then we are going to return short URL. That's it. That's your async shorten URL method. Right. This simple URL method is going to help you to shorten the corresponding URL. And then similar kind of a methods we can more write. I can say async get all URLs. Okay, I'll say return await this dot URL repository dot get all URLs. Okay, then async let's say get URL by short URL. Short URL of type string will be coming up. And I'll say return await this dot URL repository dot get url by short url and i'll pass the short url short url okay so similar kind of more methods you can write i'm leaving that to you for now so i'm leaving that to you for now as to do that write more service methods coming up here and now and now this url shortener service this url shortener service we are going to actually use inside our routes here so technically these route methods these methods that we are writing here is kind of like just controller methods only right very simple so what we can actually do is what we can actually do is we can actually try to now create a particular uh url right so inside my request dot body which we are accessing as request dot json we are accessing it as request dot json from that we are getting the original url okay now once we have the original url we can create the shortened url very easily right so let's try to do that so we'll say let's say const shortener service is equals to new url shortener service okay so this is the corresponding shortener service that we have okay and then we can say const short url is equals to await shortener service dot short an url and i'll pass the original url and then we can say return next response dot json short url as simple as that this post request now should work this post request should now work you can see everything is up and running i'll just still restart once and now let's try to make an api call so slash API slash shorten URL. Okay, or just shorten. It's just shorten. It's a post request. 
post request you can see it's a post request and in the request body you should give an original url so let's say the original url that we are going to give is http colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com okay let's see what happens if i send it you can see it's returning me a shortened url like this so technically whatever is the route after google.com it should have just shortened that part but for now like our our logic is making sense that this is our original url and this is the shortened url right so technically you will be having something like bitly bit.ly slash something which will redirect you to www.google.com something like this but you can see this shortened url is actually making sense we are able to get the input and uh, give the input and get the corresponding output and this status code should be 201 so i'll say status is 201 save it and if i send it again you will see you'll get the same output it will not generate a brand new url again it's going to give you the same output altogether right so you can see we are able to connect to mongodb we are able to connect to mongodb and we are able to fetch all of the details as well for example if i just go and make a new request add request and i'll just copy this request url paste it here and make a get request okay uh let's see oh so i have not defined a get request let's define a get request export async function get and all we have to do is all we have to do is let's say just create the shortener service and i'll say const response is equals to await shortener service dot get all urls and i'll say return next response dot json and i'll say response and that's it save it and now if you send it you can see we are able to get the response in the response we are getting all the shortened urls and you can see there is only one single shortened url this is the id of the shortened object this is the original url this is the shortened url this is the created at and updated at you can see our api is end to end working i'll just push this code very quickly i'll say get add all git commit minus m added shortener api git push origin master there we go So till now we have made one API. This definitely looks good to me. I would like to make uh, probably let's say one more API inside which we can fetch all the URLs. I don't want to keep it inside the shortened one. If you remember, I made this uh, get all URLs here, right? Let's try to refactor it. So I'll just cut this out. And inside the API folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I will call it as URLs. Inside URLs, I'm going to create a new route.ts. Okay, so this is going to give us another different route slash api slash urls kind of a thing okay cool now let's paste our code here and let's import next response okay and i'll also import the url shortening service here we go okay so now uh, we have this particular get request coming with us okay now uh, next js also provides us a lot of caching mechanisms right so uh, you can actually use these caching mechanisms in order to make sure that uh, whenever you have a request that let's say is going to be very frequently asked, then you can actually fetch that from a particular type of a cache and you can actually keep a refresh time for that cache as well. So let's try to uh, make these changes. Now, an interesting new thing that has been recently added to React is the React cache. Okay, so I'll show you the documentation, cache React, okay. And if you carefully come up here, you can see there is a new cache export that now you can get from uh, React. Cache is only used with React server components, right? Uh, you can see the frameworks that supports React server components. So Next.js does that, right? And you can see how you can use it. So if at any point of time you want to cache a couple of things, you can just use this cache method altogether, right? So we are going to use this cache coming up from React in order to make sure that if we have uh, anything, like if let's say, Within 60 seconds, if somebody likes repeatedly fetches the get all URL, then we can reply from the cache instead of checking in the DB. Okay, so let's do that. So I'll say const cache t is equals to all URLs. 
Okay, so I'll make a cache key corresponding to which there will be a value where all our URLs will be stored. Okay, and I'll say const cached data is equals to cache dot get cache key. Okay, and let's import cache from React. So you can see I'm importing cache from React altogether. Okay, cool. So um if you go inside this cache export, you can see this is the cache cached function. This is going to extend the cache function and you can actually check out how exactly this cached function is actually working as for us, right? Uh, now, now technically you do not need a cache key here as per the latest API. So a better way would be you can actually prepare a function here. Okay. So you can say const fetch URLs is equal to and then you can actually just cache your callback method here okay so you can say async callback method okay and this part that we prepare the shortener service and fetch all the urls this we are going to put here and we can say return response okay return response and then here we are just going to do one simple thing we are going to call let's say fetch urls fetch urls okay and we need to await it we need to technically await for it or let's let's do something like this const urls is equals to await fetch urls and then we can put urls as simple as that save it and now you can see we'll be having a brand new api all together with us if i open a new terminal i say npm run dev Okay, and now let's say if you make an API call to instead of slash API slash URLs and send it. Okay, now you can see we are fetching the URLs all together. If you send it again, you can see this looks absolutely great to me. Okay, so you can read more about this cache. You can read more about this cache. It's a very nice feature that has been introduced in React. Now you might be thinking that for how long this cache is uh, going to be there. So for any kind of a re-entering that actually happens in the component, right? So for that re-rendering perspective, this cache is going to fetch the data from the cache layer only. But at any point of time, let's say you absolutely refresh or reinitiate your request. For example, let's say I'm going to make an API call from Postman. So in Postman, this cache has no use because it's a React cache, right? It's a front-end thing. So from the, if I'm directly hitting from Postman, this cache has technically no use altogether, right? That is something that you have to keep in mind. So if you want to introduce more different uh, caches on the backend layer, then maybe you can use something like Redis or you can use something like node cache to improve the performance altogether, right? And this is how you can actually refactor your API and very easily you can see, very easily you can see, we have actually written one more API inside our uh, Next.js app. Okay, so now you can see we have a couple of APIs available with us. Now it's a right time to actually try to create the UIs for these, uh, for like trying to access these kind of APIs. Okay. So let's do one thing. Now let's come out of the API folder. Let's come out of the API folder. And what we are going to do is we are going to actually make a new folder and I will call it as URLs. Okay. Now inside this URLs folder, I'm going to make a new page.tsx. If you want, you can have a layout and then based on that layout, you can manipulate more things. Okay, we can have a page.tsx coming up. Cool. Now inside this page.tsx, what we are going to do is we are going to actually make an API call and fetch all of the details from our API. Okay, let's try to do that. Let's try to do that. So uh, we are going to keep it as a server component. Why? Because um, we do not have much of the client interactions here because mostly it will be just having the list of the original URL and the shortened URLs all together. Okay. So what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do is I'll say import, let's say URL service. Okay. And, or technically let's, let's do one thing. Let's first of all, prepare the component altogether. So I'll say export default async function URL list. Okay. Now inside this component, we are going to have the whole UI all together. Okay. So let's start building the UI. Now in the UI, first of all, what we need is we need a function 
that can actually fetch the URLs for us. Okay. So let's try to write that function. So I'll say async function fetch URLs. Now inside this server component, I'm going to make an API call to our API that we have prepared. Okay. Const response is equals to await fetch. Okay. So this is our next JS fetch that next JS has technically overrided. Now what next JS fetch does is next JS fetch actually provides us caching mechanisms for these API calls as well. Now we did, we did one caching mechanism on the component level. Now here also, when this particular URL list is going to make an API call, you can even cache that API call as well. So on multiple level, as I mentioned, you can uh, put caches all together. Okay. Cool. And then, and then what you can do is let's put the URL. So the URL is going to be process dot env dot. So there is a environment variable next public base URL. Okay. This will help us to get the base URL of our application because it's kind of like on the same origin, right? On the, let's say localhost 3000 is our UI as well. And on the server side also, like if you want to make an API call on the server side, that's also localhost 3000. So we need to just fetch the base URL for us. And I'll say slash API slash URLs. Okay. And then what you can do is you can pass one more object in which you can pass a property cache and mention it as force cache. So if you mention it as force, ca force cache, what next year is going to do next year is going to cache this request altogether. Okay. And if, if now this response object has a dot okay property, right? If this is not okay, right? That means something went wrong, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to throw an exception. Maybe. So I'll say throw new error failed to fetch URLs. Okay. Otherwise we are going to say return response dot JSON. Okay. Return response dot JSON. This looks good, right? And you can read more about the next fetch. Okay. Next JS fetch. And you can read more about this. Okay. You can see it's a fetch API that they have kind of like overrided altogether. Right. You can see how you can actually cache the data, data, so on and so forth here. You can see force cache that can actually help. This is kind of like the default and can be omitted as well. If you want, you don't want any cache altogether, then you can remove the cache. I was explicitly mentioned force cache here so that you can get an understanding that this is going to cache the uh, request altogether. Save it and you can see this is a function now available to us. Right. Cool. Now, what we are going to do is what we are going to do is we'll say let URLs. Okay. And I'll put a try catch. I'll put a try catch. I'll say URLs is equals to await fetch URLs. Okay. If there is any exception, if there, an if there is any exception coming up, then we are going to return a different UI component. Okay. Otherwise we are going to return a different UI component. So let's see. So I'll put a div. I'll put a div. Okay. And let's give this div some classes. Okay. Because we have tailwind. So I'll say minimum height is going to be the screen height. We'll say display flex, align items, center, justify center, and background is gray 100. Okay. And inside this div, inside this div, there is going to be one more div. There is going to be one more div, which is going to have the class as padding 10 units, background white, rounded large, rounded large, shadow to Excel. Okay, all of these are tailwind classes, max width for Excel and width full and with full. Okay. This is good. This is good. Cool. And now we can have an H1, which says error. And this H1 can get some classes. Okay. I'll say text three Excel will increase the size of the text font bold. Okay. And margin bottom six units text center and text gray. 700. Okay. And apart from this H1, apart from this H1, we are going to have a P tag as well saying failed to load URLs. 
fail to load urls okay and we can say class name text center text center and text red 500 okay cool. this looks good and in case in case there is no error at all so we'll come out of the try catch and we'll return our actual ui we'll return the actual ui altogether okay so let's start building the main ui for the list of u1 okay so i'll again say minimum height is let's say screen height display flex flex direction column align items center and justify content center right and apart from that apart from that we can put let's say background grays pg gray 100 this looks good okay now we can have one more div inside we can have one more div inside and this div can have a class padding 10 units bg white rounded large shadow to excel okay max width for excel and width for okay cool this is one more div coming up and now inside this particular div i'll be having an h1 saying all short urls right all short urls and let's try to design this h1 so i'll put a class name and i'll say text 3 excel font bold and we can say margin bottom six units text center and text gray 700 there we go so this is our all the urls coming up and below this h1 we are going to have a div below this h1 we are going to have a div inside this div we are going to say class name overflow x auto right and inside that we are going to make a table inside this div we are going to make a table simple ui you can structure the ui however you want doesn't matter much okay and inside the table we are going to have a class name and we'll say we'll give the class table I will say table zebra, right? And we'll say width full. as simple as that. Width full. Okay. This looks good. And now, and now we'll be having a T head. We'll be having a T head. Inside the T head, we are going to have one row TR. And inside that TR, we are going to have one TH. And we'll call it as original URL, original URL. And below this T head, we are going to have one more TH short URLs. Okay. Short URL. Cool. So this T head looks good. This T head looks good. Now inside the T body, the table body, we are going to actually map. So I'll say URLs, URLs dot map will go to each and every single URL. Okay. And we'll go to each and every single URL. What's the type of the URL? So let's say the type of the URL is going to be something like there will be an underscore ID property, which will be of type string. Original URL, which will be of type string. Okay. Short URL, which will be of type string. Okay. These are at least the three types that are we are going to get. Okay. And what we are going to do is we are going to have a TR. We are going to have a TR. Okay. So for every TR, the key we are going to keep the key we are going to keep as url dot id so the id of the url is going to be the corresponding key okay this looks good and let's see uh, are we missing something one second i guess we made one a mistake short url is string okay and we have to put it here so i'll say return i'll say return TR okay. This is going to have key as URL dot underscore ID. Okay. And inside this, we are going to have a TD, which will be URL dot original URL. Uh, let's 
close this curly brace. One more TD we can keep. And here we can keep an anchor tag, right? And inside the anchor tag, let's say, um, we'll put something like this here. So we will say dollar process dot env dot next public base URL slash slash dollar URL dot dot URL. Okay. And let's give this anchor tag a couple of classes and everything here and there. Okay. So I'll say an href inside the href. Uh, let's put it like this. So first of all, href is going to be dollar URL dot sorry, I would say slash dollar URL dot dot URL. Okay. I'll put a target is equals to underscore blank so that it always opens in a new tab. Okay. Then I'll say class name as link link primary. Okay. This looks good. This looks good. If I save it, if I save it and let's see if the server is up. Yep. The server is up. Now let's do one thing. I'll say localhost 3000 slash URLs, right? That's the route, right? Localhost 3000 slash URLs. And if I press enter, okay, you can see there is an error page now coming up fail to load URLs. Let's see what actually happened. Why it's not able to load our URLs. Let's see then, um, refresh. Okay. You can see this actually made the URLs, uh, API call and localhost uh, sorry this is the page call not the api call this is the page call and let's see if any exception came up let's see what exception came up uh, let's say console.log url now this is a server side driven component right so our lo error logs are going to come up here and you can see this is the issue this is the issue it says input undefined api urls uh, let's see Okay, so this uh, environment variable, it's not able to fetch. I guess I forgot to set up the environment variable. Okay, so you can read about this. You can actually read about this. Okay. And you can come up here. How can you customize environment variables in Next.js? Okay, so you can see these kind of uh, environment variables we were already modifying, right? So apart from that, uh, you can have these kind of environment variables coming up as well. Okay. And you can see, um, if you prefix the variable name with next underscore public underscore, then th th that turns them to public environment variables. Okay. So we need to set this environment variable copy and I will come here. And for now I'll say localhost 3000, save it and Let's see. Okay. So there is one more error coming up. Let's restart the server once. Hmm. Looks okay. Looks good. Let's see if I come back here and if I refresh, uh, let's see if there is any error. Okay. Now there is an error. Uh, let's see. It says unknown scheme. Just a second. Da, da, da. Okay. So this makes a call to fetch URLs. Okay. Let's try to do one thing. Let's try to do one thing inside our, uh, I would say UI here. Okay. Let's, uh, console.log this. Okay. Console.log this one, save it. Okay. And let's see how things work. Post this compilation. I'll refresh and let's see. Okay. So it makes a call to localhost 3000 slash API slash URL. This looks good. I believe the problem is that I have not added HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost. Okay. Now you can see, uh, it is indeed making the calls. Okay. It is indeed making the calls. Okay. It says urls.map is not a function. So I believe we can resolve that. 
let us check let us check let's see what's the urls coming up as console.log urls save okay and refresh okay let's see what the urls is coming up as okay so this is the urls this is the urls so there is a urls dot urls property okay my bad so let's do it like this okay so i'll say uh urls dot urls save it and now this looks good and you can see all shortened urls are coming up here looks good right so this is the original url and this is the shortened urls uh there is one spelling mistake that i would like to resolve uh and i will call it as something like this all short urls okay you can see all short urls are coming up let's make one more uh url shortened so let's say instead of google.com let's say yahoo.com if i send it you can see this is the new shortened url if let's say if i'll refresh the page okay um now uh you can see so what's happening is it's actually fetching the data from our cache it's actually fetching the data from our cache and it's now uh not revalidating the cache so there is a header that you can manually set so that you can control the cache age altogether okay so i can show you that uh probably it should be mentioned in the documentation so there is a cache control header in nextjs okay so uh you can see a couple of headers coming up here and header quickie and query caching one second you can see setting cache control header and this kind of a header you can actually set these kind of headers you can actually set so let's do that let's do that okay and there is some by default uh, i would say cache update that actually happens after some time okay so if i manually refresh you can see i did a hard refresh and now this is coming up if let's say if i one more do one more thing let's say book my show.com and send it you can see and now if i will refresh you can see again this is not coming up but what i have to do i have to do a hard refresh if i do a hard refresh now you can see book my show is coming up okay so what you can do is you can manually invalidate the cache and make sure that after some time it automatically fetches the latest data okay so that the cache is not that much stale and how can you do that is if you go back to your api let's go to our api urls route.ts okay now here what you can do is you can actually set the headers also you can actually set the headers also okay and you can say headers dot set headers dot set and there is a header called as cache control that you can set okay and i will say value is going to be public comma max age is equals to 3600 okay s hyphen max age is equals to 3600 okay this kind of a this should be s hyphen max age okay this kind of a cache control header we can actually set okay and we can say comma stale while revalidate is equals to 59 okay so this is the i would say header that we can actually set while making the api call so this should automatically tell the browser when to actually invalidate the cache or when to actually refresh the cache altogether because if you carefully see what we are saying here is that First of all, the first parameter that we have passed is public. This public says that the response can be cached by any cache. It, this response can be cached by the browser cache, any other, like let's say some other backend is caching the data. Anyone can actually cache this data. Max age is equals to 3600 is going to specify the maximum amount of time in seconds that the response is going to be considered fresh. In this case, max age equals to 3600 means that for approximately one hour, we are going to consider that our response is fresh. Okay. After one hour, the cache consider the response tail and will automatically revalidate it. Okay. The S hyphen max age, this one, the S hyphen max age is equals to 3600. This is going to override the max age for shared cache, wherever you have some CDN, some proxies at that, like in those systems, you need the X S hyphen max age parameter and then stale while revalidate. The last value that we have set 
it allows the cache to serve a stale response while it revalidates the response in the background. Okay. So like when the cache will be invalidated, then it has to go back in the API and fetch the latest data. So while fetching the data, you need to some show something, right? So it actually helps to show the stale response while it is fetching the data, right? So it means that the cache can serve the stale res response for up to 59 seconds while it fetches a fresh version of the server. Okay. So this is how you actually control it. Now, let's say, now let's say if you change this from 3600 to, let's say 60 seconds, that is, let's say one minute to change it to 60 seconds, save it. I'll restart my server and then let's see what happens. So if I restart the server, okay, so, uh, let's wait for it to complete. Now what you can do is if you make a refresh, okay, you can see all these APIs are coming up. If you refresh, all these APIs are coming up. Looks good. Now let's try to add something. So let's say if I'll say, uh, something like ircpc.com, send it. And you can see we have a new short URL. If you refresh, you can see there is nothing coming up. I'm not going to do a hard refresh. Let's see approximately after 60 seconds, what's hap what happens. Okay. I will not do a hard refresh. I'll just constantly monitor the cache. Okay. And you can see all of these caching mechanisms are by default coming out of the box from next year's. You can play around with this and get a lot of idea around it. Okay. So let's refresh and let's wait for approximately 60 seconds. Okay. And we can even check the network request. What is coming up in the network request refresh. Okay. This time it says fail to load the URLs. One second. It's saying fail to load the URLs. Let us see why. Let's see what's the issue. Okay. So there is some issue coming up. Da da da. Okay. It says no response returned, uh, in all branches of your hand. Okay. So there is one small mistake that we have technically done. If you carefully see, if you carefully see, then what we should do is, um, let's see. Actually this API, this API call happened when we tried to refetch the data. Okay. And let us see. So we are saying next response dot JSON and we are having the URLs here. This is good. This is good. And then we are saying response dot this. So let's do something like this. I'll say const response is equals to this. And I'll say response dot headers dot set. And then we are going to say return response. Something like this will do. Okay. Let's open a new terminal. You can see it's now validated. If I refresh, you can see it says ISTC is coming up here. Okay. Now let's add one more, uh, website, for example, let's say DuckDuckGo. Okay. Send it. You can see one more shortened URL created. If now I will refresh, you can see it brings ducks, duck, duck, go almost immediately because probably 60 second happened. Let's do one more thing. Let's say, uh, mate dot ac dot in. Okay. And send it. You can see one more shortened URL. And if I refresh, you can see mate.ac.in is almost immediately coming up, right? So if you carefully see how the request is actually being uh, like sent, then we are trying to revalidate the cache pretty fast, right? It's like 60 seconds altogether, right? So this, you, it's a browser, uh, I would say request. So if I say max age in cache control, you can actually see. means that the it's for 120 seconds. So if you increase the time in seconds, then it's going to cache for more amount of time. So let's say, for example, let's uh, cache it for, um, let's say this is uh, 60 seconds, right? This is 60 seconds. Let's maybe do it 180 seconds. Let's do it 180 seconds. Okay. Save it. And I'll say refresh. You can see all these URLs are coming up. I'll say msit.ac.ac.in send it. And now if you refresh, Okay. So this is coming immediately. Almost this is coming immediately. Almost let's see if it is not caching it all together. Uh, let's see if I refresh. Okay. So it's almost making an API call again. It's making the API call again. It's making the API call again. Let's try to debug it. Why that might be happening. 
Okay, so probably the issue that here we are facing is that we are manually refreshing the page again and again because we, as of now, we just have a single page. So that's why it's technically fetching all of the data again and again, right? You can see I uh, added a couple of more data and let's try to do one thing. Let's add a couple of more pages and then we will come back here and then we will see whether it is still, um, I would say, refreshing the cache again and again or not. Okay, so for doing that, for doing that, let's add one more page inside which we are going to create a brand new um i would say shortened url because as of now again and again we are just making the shortened url from postman let's have a form that can help us to actually create a shortened url okay now if you carefully see as of now what we did was inside our page.tsx we were actually making an api calls from here this was our server component and we were making an api call here okay now let's do one thing let's do one thing now because we need some interaction altogether we need some interaction altogether what we can have is, um, let's say, we can have a root, we can have our root page, page.tsx here, and we can make this a client component, use client, okay, use client. And then what we're going to do is, we're going to prepare a client component here that can actually help us to create brand new URLs altogether. So let's try to implement that, okay? so. Now, being a client component, it will be having all the basic features of React, state, effects, transitions, everything. Okay. So I'll say const original URL, comma set original URL is equals to use state empty string. And I'll say const dot URL, comma set dot URL is equals to use state. Use state and we'll be having an empty string. Then what we can do is we can say const is pending, comma start transition. Start transition is equals to use transition. So there is a hook use transition, right? If you don't know about the hook use transition, I can just quickly brief you with that. You can say use transition hook can actually help you to deprioritize any state update. Okay. So where we are going to use it, I'll show you in a moment. Okay. Now what we can have is we can have a const handle submit function because we are going to eventually make some kind of form maybe handle submit is equals to async and there will be an event object which will be a react dot form event okay react dot form event first thing first we are going to say e dot prevent default and we'll say start transition we'll say start transition inside which we are going to pass a function async function and now here we are going to do a couple of things right here we are going to do a couple of things so whatever you are going to mention inside start transition is going to be kind of like a delayed state update for us right okay so now inside the start transition what we are going to do is we are going to actually add a server action now server action is a new thing that has been introduced by nextjs okay so if you go for server action nextjs Okay, you can see server actions are asynchronous function that are executed on the server. They can be used in server and client component both to handle form submissions and data mutations. So most of the time when you have a React application and let's say you have to, let's say submit a form, what do you do? Nowadays you just make an API call, right? You use some effect or like some kind of an API call, you try to initiate, right? But this server action actually helps us to go back again old school. If you see simple HTML forms, in simple HTML forms, what happens? You put an action, right? You put a URL on which the form is going to be submitted and you get a response back. The only problem is that those forms actually refresh the page. You can say server actions here do a similar kind of a stuff. You don't need to do any JavaScript interaction for implement, like to submit a form, you do not need any kind of a JavaScript interaction, like on the click of a button, do something, this, that, this, that. And then maybe, maybe use XML HTTP request or XIOS or fetch to make an API call. All of that you do not need. All you will do is you will just define a server action and on the submission of a form, you will just tell which server action to execute and whether it's a server component or a client component does not matter. You will still be able to do form submission and that's important, right? Because let's say if you have a server component, if you have a server component, then in case of a server component, you do not want to have any interactions otherwise it will not lead to a server component it will become a client side component so any servers server driven component you have and you want to have a form submission also then you can use server actions and it's pretty easy to uh, create server actions 
you can see any method that you are going to create with this directive use server if you put this string at the top use server it makes it a server action altogether okay and then what you can actually do is what you can actually do is let me actually show you so um, you can see this is an example so you can see there is this method create invoice and you put a use server here now this becomes a server action now from wherever you want to actually call this action you will just create a form and on this action property you can just call create invoice altogether and then it will fetch the form data automatically get these data details automatically from here and implement the stuff this is very very i would say simple to use so for example let's say for a moment i do not like uh, i do not want to have a use client and let's even remove this use transition for a moment okay let's remove this use transition for a moment let's remove this handle submit for a moment as well okay so now this is what this is our typical server component right let's remove these states as well remove these states as well okay and let me just put a simple ui here okay so i already have the uh basic things around the ui in my mind so let's just quickly implement that so i'll have a div okay and these are the set of classes that i will give to the corresponding div okay so copy and paste it here okay you can see i have given minimum height screen flex flex item center justify content center slight a bit of gradient so on and so forth okay and then what we are going to do is we are going to have one more div we are going to have one more div here inside this div also i'll put a couple of classes here and there so very similar classes to that of our all urls page save it here and then i'll say h1 url shoddy okay and i'll put these classes here copy paste okay cool now interesting stuff is going to come up okay interesting stuff is going to come up below this h1 below this h1 we are going to have a form below this h1 we are going to have a form this form is going to get an action property we'll come back to the action property for now we'll put a class name space y6 okay cool. now let's build up this form let's build up this form altogether and this is going to be a pretty uh, simple form you can say there will be an input tag the type is going to be a text the placeholder is going to be enter url okay and we do not need any value property or anything we'll just use a name variable original url original url that's it okay and in the class name we will say input input border and we will say width full let's see how does it look like save it and we'll come to our home page. You can see URL shorty. This enter URL is coming up. Looks good. Okay. And then, and then what we can actually do is we can put a button here. We can actually put a button here. Okay. We'll call this button as shorten. We'll call this button as shorten. And we are going to give this a couple of I would say classes, BTN, BTN primary, width full. As simple as that. Okay. And let's do one more thing. Let's do one more thing. Below this form, below this particular form, what we are going to do is we'll say let's have a div. And inside this div, we are going to use the link component. Okay, so this link component will be coming from next link. Okay, and we'll say inside this link component let's say we'll be having an anchor tag saying view all shortened urls okay view all shortened urls save it we do not need this href we need this class name btn btn secondary with full okay and the link here is going to be href to slash urls okay and this div should be having a class let's say margin top six units text center save it and now uh let's quickly check anything is broken or what 
da, da, da. so this is the link tag href slash url this is good slash urls hmm let us see okay uh let's make it a span make it a span save it and you can see view all shortened urls is technically coming up let's do one thing let's move it to the calls uh column flex okay so let's make it a flex call okay and let's bring it back here save it view all shortened urls if you click here you are going to go to slash urls which will be coming up here looks good now let's see what happens now if you carefully see there is this form right there is this form now ideally if you want to submit the form in normal react components you do on submit right you never use this action property but that's where server actions come into the picture what you can do is inside like this form you can mention action is equal to a particular server action method and what is this server action method going to do let me actually show you something like this okay so inside this server action method you can expect the form data coming up you can expect the form data coming up and this form data is going to get some properties and give you a corresponding response back okay and it's very easy to actually set up these kind of server components all together so uh, let me show you with an example let me show you with an example so let's say we'll come to our apis if you remember we have this route.ts right now this is technically a post request api call this is technically a post request api call okay so you can still use this you can still use this because if you remember we were able to use it using postman now what i can do is now what i can do is you can say i can make another folder i'll call it as actions or i should say let's say server actions okay inside server action i'll create a new file i'll say shorten url action.ts okay and how the method is going to look like i'll say const shorten url is equals to let's say async okay and we are going to get a form data this is of type form data uh, let's get the type from here you can see this form data you can actually get this form data okay and you will say you will say use a server so this directory you have to put on the top if you put a use server now this becomes a server action now all you can do is you can say const url or i would say original original url is equals to form data form data dot get and we can put the name of the form so i would say let's come up here page dot tsx right not this one this one and what's the name property here name is original url so we'll get the original url name and put it here this is going to fetch our form data so i'll say console dot log original url past is let's say original url okay and then what we can do is we can take this original url we can take this original url and technically create something so i'll go to my api shorten route and you can see we can create a url shortener service shorten the url copy and paste something like this url shortener service okay and what we can do is we can just take the original url copy right let's quickly check what's the issue here okay and we can just do something like this or let's say um, this will be always coming up like this okay just do one thing let's see what's the argument here okay this is a string right so what we can actually do is what we can actually do is we can mark it as optional right we can mark it as optional and we will say if not original url then we can just return an empty string that's it okay and this can come up let's see still it is throwing an error let's check okay 
so we'll say hmm and this is of type spring right this is of type spring this is good okay and let's see why this is taking a form data like this let's quickly check so let's see what the get is returning what the get is returning get can have a form data entry value or null let's see what can be the form okay form data entry value can be a file or a string so what we can do is we can just say it as as string save it and you can see this is good this is good right and for now for now you can say that's it this is the method shorten url this is the method shorten url okay and uh, you can see you can mutate the data what is mutate the data that means if you want to create any side effects on the server you can use this server action to do that let's see whether this works or not i'll say export shorten url i'll come to my page dot dsx and you can see now what we are going to do we are not going to make an api call we are going to say shorten url save it you can see everything is looking like up and running and if i go back just quickly refresh let's give a url here so i'll say http colon https colon forward slash forward slash www dot um and let's say let's get the nextjs dot org okay nextjs dot org okay let's try to shorten this url i'll open my uh i would say network tab as well to see what happens and if i click on shorten okay and let's also do one thing let's open mongodb atlas mongodb atlas apart from that let's see if there is any logs or anything coming up no error logs or such let's open mongodb atlas okay let me sign in very quickly just allow me a minute let me sign into my mongodb database and see whether we have created something or not okay so this is up this is up and you can see if i go to browse collections if i go to urls okay so this has not created our brand new url let's just quickly debug what might be happening okay so let's come back and let's see what might be happening wrong there is one small bug in our application if you carefully see i have not added this input tag inside my form and the button inside my form that's the technical problem so the form was technically empty right small mistake and apart from that this button should be having a type property of submit let's try it out try it out now and see what happens so you can see i'll take this url i'll clear out everything and i'll click on let's say shorten if you see it has made an api request right or technically it has submitted the form the page doesn't refresh it's not like a normal form that will refresh the page right so page doesn't refresh if you go here and let's say refresh your data to see what all um, i would say urls you have now you can see you have a new url nextjs.org as well isn't that looking nice and we were able to create this form we were able to create this form without any javascript interaction altogether but still without making the page refresh as well if now let's say you go to view all shortened urls you can see it's fetching all the corresponding shortened urls okay now let's say we come back and let's shorten one more url so i'll say http colon forward slash forward slash www dot and let's say we can say bing dot com okay if i click on shorten again you can see it made another shortened url and if you click on view shortened url now you can see this is now not again fetching the data you can see now uh, our bing.com is not coming up right so what you have to do either you manually refresh the page and you can see now bing.com comes up right or let's even do one more thing let's even do one more thing to have a better user experience inside our all urls page here right let's also have one more div 
or let's say just a link here link coming from next link and we will go to href home page i'll say go to home save it and let's say now we have a go to home coming up here i'll put the text and everything properly so let's say go to home and we can say class name let's say text black or let's say text gray 800 something like this save it and you can see now go to home is coming up if i click on this we are back on home okay now if i just refresh my page okay let's say now we will say https colon forward slash forward slash www dot and uh, this time we can say go ibbo dot com right and if we click on shorten you can see it shortened the url if you go to view all shortened urls you can see now go ibbo dot com is immediately also coming up as well right if you go back to home if you go back to go shortened url you can see we are able to hop and hop out of our corresponding pages right so we have a multi-page app coming up and we are able to list all the corresponding urls as well so all of this i believe is working fine as such so now you can see our application is up and running fine now let's see some uh, interaction around the cache so if you remember we were able to set up the cache right we were able to set up the cache headers and everything right so let's say if i go to view all shortened urls you can see these are the shortened urls coming up and it actually made the db call and actually fetched the cache uh, or i would say fetch the data if i go back home and if i click on view all shortened urls again you can see it's not fetching the data why because it's going to only prefetch the data after 180 um, i would say seconds once this is done if i click on view shortened urls again you can see it's not fetching the data again if i go back home and if i click on view all shortened urls again you can see still not fetching because 180 seconds have not yet passed if i go back home let's wait for a couple of seconds And now let's try again, view all shortened URLs. Now you can see it's refetching the data up ahead, right? So that's interesting, right? But now let's say what we want is if I go back to home, if I say www.postman.com, if I shorten this and view all shortened URLs, you can see postman.com is not coming up. Why? Because it's still fetching the data from the cache. But ideally what should happen is whenever we create a new shortened URL, it should revalidate our whole cache. So for that, what Next.js says is that because we are using a server action, what we should do is there is a method called as revalidate path. If you mention any particular path, let's say slash URLs, then what will happen is the moment you create a brand new shortened URL, it's going to revalidate the path for that particular, uh, I would say URL if I save it. And now let's say if I click on view all shortened URLs, bingmt.com is the last one coming up let's let's refresh let's do a hard refresh you can see now postman is coming up go back view all shortened urls you can see now it's not making a call again if i go back home and if i say www.excel.com shorten and if i click on view all shortened url now you can see immediately excel is coming up because it's going to immediately revalidate the path for slash urls so that's the power of caching and that's the power of revalidating and all of this next year's by default provides so you can see in this whole application, I've just used server driven, I would say server side components, right? Uh, React server components, you can see. I have not done any use effect, any or any use state or any use transition kind of a thing. And still we are able to make a pretty simple, I would say single page application, right? Uh, now I'd like to just add one last thing. For example, if you click on view all shortened URLs, you can see if I click on this URL, nothing actually happens, right? What we should do is we should be able to redirect the user on the corresponding original URL the moment somebody clicks on this. So let's try to implement that. So now what we are going to do is what we are going to do is um, the moment anybody comes on this particular URL, let's try to implement the logic for that. So how our URL is going to be looking like this is going to be this slash uh, and uh, let's do one more thing. Let's do one more thing. Okay. Uh, let's clear everything in the database. Let's clear everything in the database. Okay. So I'll just delete this URLs connection. Okay, drop. Okay, so our URLs collection has been dropped. Now, what we'll do is when we are creating a new URL, when we are creating a new shortened URL, you can see this is the shortened URL, right? Inside the shortener service, inside the shortener service, 
to create the url this short url we should do something like this okay so this should be dollar url uh, we should say url slash dollar short url okay this should be the shortened url that we should technically create if i save it and let's say if i just refresh and let's turn up the server as well okay uh da -da -da. why there is a use context coming up let's just quickly check um i believe i know the issue so inside my urls page okay we should have a check here right if url dot urls exist then only we should say url dot urls okay sorry url dot urls save it and you can see no url actually coming up if i go back to home create a url nextjs.org shorten view all shortened urls you can see nextjs.org is coming up and you can see i have now changed it to slash url slash this particular right okay now what i'm going to do is i'll say inside urls i'll make a let's make this thing okay so inside url i'll create a new folder and i'll say id okay and inside this i'm going to make a route.ts okay and just like this kind of a route this kind of a route i'm making the route here as well okay just that what we are going to do is we need to actually fetch the params okay we need to fetch the params so how do we fetch the params you can say request is of type request and then we can have your params which will be of type which will be of type an object which will be having an id of type string okay so i'll say const id is equals to and you can say params so now we have the corresponding id when somebody clicks on this id we have this corresponding id now there is a method called as redirect right there is a method called as redirect okay we can actually redirect the user to any particular url that we want for example if i say https colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com google.com okay and let's keep it like this save it and this should not come from here this should come from next navigation next navigation save it okay now at any point of time you can see if i click on this particular let's say url okay uh, it says the page is not found let's just see what can be done so this is slash url oh my bad this should be urls this should be urls okay so i'll come to shorten route and then i'll go to service and here this should be urls save it let's clear the collection again refresh Okay, this looks good. Let's go back, go to home and let's say nextjs.org. I'll shorten it, view all shortened URLs. And now if I click here, okay, now you can see this is coming as slash URL slash this, right? Slash URL slash this. Okay, now what I want is if at any point of time, if anybody makes, an, makes a call here, makes a get request to slash URL slash something like this. Okay, so for example, in my postman, if I make a call to something like this, then ideally what should happen is if you carefully see what's happening this is returning me the page for google right um uh, no sorry not google it's actually returning me the corresponding page here it's actually returning me the corresponding page here that is not found this same page it is actually returning us so let's do a couple of things let's do a couple of things so first of all inside the api okay so we have this slash urls the slash this particular thing okay and let's uh, do one thing let's do one thing okay so one small mistake that we are doing here is uh, let's not uh, implement this logic inside our apis okay let's delete this folder 
let's delete this folder and let's implement this logic inside our page otherwise in api for redirection you have to send the redirection mess uh, message codes and everything as well right so that will be too much of a task we can achieve it relatively simpler i'll click on id and i'll click on new file page dot yes x okay and then here we can write our redirection logic a very simple redirection logic we can actually write here so i'll say export default async function url redirect okay and here also you can access the same params you can access the params in a similar way right it's just that you don't be having the request parameter as the first parameter altogether okay and i'll say console.log params.id and let's say what i'll do is i'll say redirect from next navigation and i'll just redirect to https colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com okay and at last we are going to let's return a null here if i save it okay and you can see it's doing the redirections if i come back here you can see go home view all shortened urls click here and you can see we are able to redirect ourselves to google.com as simple as that okay so now instead of just directing us ourselves to google.com what we should technically do is we should be able to redirect ourselves to the original url right so whatever is the original url we should be able to redirect ourselves there so we should technically try to fetch the original url so i'll say async function fetch original url okay fetch original urls and i'll say a shortened url i'll pass as a string now, if you remember, we have the service, right? So I'll say const URL service is equals to new URL shortener service. And we'll say return await URL service. This should be URL service. Okay. URL service dot get url by short url and we'll pass the url okay that's it and then what we can do is we can do let's say const original is equals to await fetch original url and let's say i'm going to pass the id here okay i'm going to pass the id here and technically we should construct the whole url we should construct the whole url so i'll say urls right this is what urls slash dollar params dot id okay and then whatever is the original url you should redirect there okay they redirect to the original url let's quickly check okay and from here you should say dot um or we should say const response and from this response we should fetch the original URL. return response dot original url okay and we will say if original is coming up then we are going to redirect to the original url otherwise we are going to redirect to slash 404 okay not found save it and let's try now let's try now let's save this one uh, remove it cool let's go back to the home page let's say i'll say medium.com https medium.com shorten the url view all shortened urls medium.com is coming up this is the url and if i click on this you can see it's redirecting us to medium.com okay if let's say we try with a random url if let's say if I try with a random URL that is not present in the backend, then it returns us to 404. So you can see our URL redirection is also properly working fine. It's like how uh, almost cool, right? You can see Next.js website is also we are coming up. This is definitely looking absolutely great, right? So you can see our app is having a very good shape. I'll just commit all of this. Hit commit minus M added URL dot main logic. Here we go so you can see using server actions we have actually prepared everything 
like you can change all of these implementation instead of server actions you can actually use uh, normal api calls then it will be your normal react app as i mentioned you just need to opt in to become a client component and then rest everything is going to be your normal uh, react logic but if you want to implement something like server actions you have to just say use server and then these server actions are going to be available inside your forms so if you go here if you come up here you can see this is technically available inside your form you need to just submit the form and everything will be rest handled and apart from that in any kind of let's say uh, server side rendered component like server components like for example if you see this one okay this is again a server component and we are able to fetch the data directly from the server this time though we were making an api call you can see this is kind of like making an api call for fetching all the urls but if you want you can again replace it with just a simple function call that's the power of server components it's all built on the server side and then has been delivered to you on the client side okay now one more thing that you can technically do is like when you click on view shortened url once again let's turn up the server okay so nextjs also provides you a couple of more handy things okay so for example if you want any loading element in nextjs right that till the time the data is loading you want something else to be shown what you can do is you can just make a loading.ts file for example let's say if i say on the urls here i'll create i'll come up here inside this i'll create a new file i'll say loading.tsx okay and let's say if i say export default function loading and i say return and i just return a fragment saying loading so till the time our data is going to be loaded from the backend this is this component is actually going to be shown so let's come back to localhost 3000 okay you can see this is up if i click on view shortened urls you can see a slight bit of loading was coming up right if i click on inspect and if I go to the network tab and I make it slow 3G, uh, first of all, let's make it no throttling, go back to home. Okay. And let's see if I make it slow 3G. And if I click on view shortened URLs, okay. Now cu currently it's fetching it from the cache, it's fetching it from the cache for now. Let's wait for cache to invalidate. Okay. Let's go back to home. And probably by now it should invalidate. Okay. So if I click on view all shortened URL, you can see loading is coming up because now it has to fetch the data again. And then you can see all shortened URLs are coming up. So if you want to have any component having a loading state as well, this is very easy. Like it comes out of the box, you can just have loading.js. And till the time the component is completely mounted, that loading component is going to be shown. Similar to that, you can have an error.js to actually show any error scenario. Whenever your component is not loaded properly, uh, you can actually show an error uh, as a fallback UI. These kind of implementations are also available with plain React, but Next.js just makes all of these things simple. So you can try to explore it. I would say it's still a relatively new framework. A lot of things have changed in the last two years with Next.js. So I would highly recommend you guys to start exploring the documentation. We saw how caching is working. We actually saw how server actions are working. Using server actions, we are able to create the data. We are able to revalidate the paths. We are able to see the routing server driven, uh, I would say server side rendered components client components a lot of things we are able to see i would highly recommend you guys to start exploring this and that was next js for you guys yeah.